Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Karen Fillion, and I have the incredible honor of being the CEO of the Virginia Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> an easy crowd. Um, thank you all so much for coming to celebrate this happy day with us. New artistic leadership is one of the most exciting times in the life of a symphony orchestra. And while the past year has been challenging, our musicians and our staff have persevered with tenacity. And we are now feeling, as I hope you are, the rush of a fresh start and tremendous optimism for the future. <laughs> With vision, incredibly talented and dedicated musicians, a strong professional staff, and a committed board of directors, the VSO is poised to make the most of this important moment. I'm so pleased so many of you could make the time to be with us today and to celebrate the opening of this new chapter in the organization's history. And I'm especially grateful to the mayor of the city of Norfolk for joining us. It's my pleasure now to introduce the Honorable Kenneth Cooper Alexander to say a few words. Well, good morning. It's wonderful to see all of you in person and out on Zoom. <laughs> Long time coming. Uh, thank you for all uh, for being here. Uh, the arts community is a critical driver to Norfolk's economy and to our region. It attracts companies and employees while improving the quality of life. Norfolk proudly serves as the epic center of the visual and performing arts in Hampton Roads. And I'm proud to be here today with my colleague, Andrea McClellan, the next Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. <laughs> VSO is celebrating its centennial, 100 years in operation. Not many orchestras in the country have reached such a milestone, yes. <laughs> Norfolk and the entire region is fortunate to have a full-time professional orchestra of the VSO's caliber here in our community. The musicians, yes, that's good, yes. <laughs> the musicians are recruited from all over the world. They come here, they live, they worship, they raise their families. Not only do they play in the orchestra, but they volunteer at our public schools, in our universities, and they perform in churches and in community and throughout, throughout the year. Eric, we look forward to that continued success under your leadership of the orchestra. Um, we know that you will do great things and build on a strong foundation. Again, thank you for being here. I look forward to a future of you in our region. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I think it's fair to say in the spring of 2018, when Mike and Andrea McClellan were asked to chair the search for the VSO's new music director, they had absolutely no idea what they were getting into. <laughs> we are extremely fortunate that they said yes. Their steady guidance has brought us to this moment, and we are so grateful to them for their leadership. It's my pleasure now to introduce Mike McClellan, who also chairs the VSO's Board of Directors, and Councilwoman Andrea McClellan. Well, good morning. This is, this is quite an enthusiastic crowd. I don't think I've heard this much applause, and I would ask you to hold your applause to the end of each sentence. Um, <laughs> good, so, no, it's great to be here. I'm joined by my wife, uh, City Councilwoman Andrea McClellan, um, also running for Lieutenant Governor. She's really busy. Um, this is the first time I've seen her this week, in fact. Um, it's just good to see you on stage. 
So it's a really exciting time to be here at the VSO. I didn't realize it was three, over three years ago we started this process. Um, choosing a musical director for a, such a, a, a renowned institution as this is a really hard thing to do. It's harder than, say, choosing a spouse. Um, <laughs> and it involves a lot more people. And um, <laughs> so um, I'd like to start off by recognizing uh, the 14, if you're here, the 14 people who were on the search committee. If you could stand up. <laughs> Three years later, who would have thought? Um, what was really cool about this search committee, it was, it was seven uh, of the musicians of the symphony um, who really guided us artistically, and then seven civilians um, who basically sat there and listened to what the musicians had to say. Um, the musicians had a very strong role in, in making this decision, and I want to thank all of you for, for getting us to this, to this great point. You know, we, we interviewed, or we, we discerned over 100 candidates we interviewed over 25, um, and then we, I don't want to use the word audition or whatever you call it, um, seven or eight of them, depending on how you count it, but, and that's how you get to these decisions. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort over a, a long period of time. Now, we expected to be making this announcement last summer, right, but things don't always go as planned. We were all knocked down by COVID, um, but I'll tell you, when COVID struck, this organization was on a, was on a roll, and it is on a roll now. Um, we're at 101 years now, I think, uh, about to enter our 101st year. Um, we're concluding our largest fundraising campaign ever. Thank you to everyone who has um, participated in that. We're almost there. We're almost there, but, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask for money. So, <laughs> need a little bit more. Um, and now the, the capstone of this, uh, as we power into our next season, of course, is our new music, musical director who we'll announce here in a minute. Hint, it's one of these three people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to. I do want to thank all of the the donors and everybody who works so hard to get us through the pandemic. But I want to do a make a special shout out to the musicians. Uh, the musicians sort of bore the brunt of of this pandemic and everything we had to do to for our shortened season and everything. And I just want to give the musicians a round of applause. They really are the core and the backbone of this. So Andrea and I and, and the board, I mean, we are very optimistic about the future of this organization. As I say, we're going to power into the next, um, into the next season, and we're going to power into our next 100 years. Um, and especially with the addition of our bold new artistic vision, um, and we have even more reason for optimism. So I am thrilled today, one of these three, get ready to stand up. Uh, <laughs> the winner is... Um, <laughs> Thrilled to announce today that our choice for the 12th music director, 12th music director in 101 years, of the Virginia Symphony Orchestra as noted American conductor and cellist, Mr. Eric Jacobson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. 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 All right. Now. All right. All right, save that for his first performance. Um, I screwed this up. I was supposed to introduce Andrea, uh, but that was good. You'll, so you'll, have, you'll get to applaud for him again. Um, but now uh, let's applaud for Andrew McClellan, who's going to talk about Eric a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Karen. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this great guy here with the great socks. So um, just before I get started, though, you know, um, well, number one, you got to see the humor of my husband that I've been experiencing for uh, 28 years of marriage. Um, and I've heard a few of those jokes before. Uh, <laughs> but in all honesty, when Karen came to us and asked us to co-chair this search committee, I had to think really hard about this because I was busy. Um, we were busy, uh, and, and we never co-chaired anything together other than raising our three sons, and it was quite the experience. 
Um, so I'm, I'm happy that we are here successfully. But more importantly, let me tell you a little bit more about Eric Jacobson. Mike and I first met Eric uh, when he came to conduct the orchestra in 2018, and we were just wowed. Um, and then this past March, under really challenging circumstances, you came back, thankfully, uh, with social distancing on, on stage, uh, masks on everyone. Eric handled those concerts and the challenge just beautifully to his choices and pieces, his comments from the stage uh, that were interesting and they were informative. And he delivered in a way to establish an immediate connection with the audience. And I hope that you had the opportunity to experience it. But boy, if you haven't, you're in for a real treat. Eric has already built a diverse and fascinating career, although he is not yet 40 years old. Oh, he is currently the music director of the Orlando Philharmonic and the Bridgeport Symphony in Connecticut, and is the artistic director of the Knights, a uniquely collaborative and adventuresome orchestra based in New York City. Eric founded the Knights with his brother, violinist Colin Jacobson, and the Knights grew out of late night chamber music reading parties. Who knew? Uh, with their friends, uh, and uh, in addition to being a conductor, Eric is also an accomplished cellist. He grew up in a musical family, and in addition to his brother, his mother was a professional flute player, and his father a violinist, who for 30 years played in the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. Eric has said that his parents showed him at an early age that, quote, music is a party. I think we would all agree. Eric is known everywhere he conducts for, his engaging, for engaging audiences with innovative programming, and his warm and authentic communication style and amazing socks collection. <laughs> I'd like to share just a few of the comments that we received um, from our audiences. Quote, he is a breath of fresh air. His enthusiasm is contagious. He's very genuine, inclusive, and thoughtful, absolutely charming and delightful. And I know that Eric will be a wonderful addition to the Virginia Symphony Orchestra, and it's my great pleasure to do what my husband has already done, to introduce you to Hampton Roads community, to the next music director of the Virginia Symphony Orchestra, Eric Jacobson. It just hit me right there that this was happening, even though we've been talking about this for a few months now. I am so incredibly excited. Mike, Andrea, Mayor, Karen, thank you so much for, for putting this together. And I, seeing all of you in person without, without masks, I'm just, I'm gonna cry. Uh, it makes me so happy to see everyone. I, I remember that concert in 2018. I remember coming and getting to work with the orchestra. And I think it was, you know, it was love at first here when uh, getting to do Scheherazade, Rimsky-Korsakov, this beautiful piece that the orchestra obviously knows and plays so beautifully. I remember coming off stage and I, you know, I called my wife that night and I'm like, I, I met this orchestra. <laughs> they sound so good. I, I, I feel like we have a connection. I, I need to, you know, maybe sometime. I feel like it was one of those situations that if it was slightly different relationship, I'd show up, you know, with flowers and an invitation to dinner and a movie or something. It, it felt so immediate and so, you know, six months later when invited to come and participate in the search, I felt just, I'm like, Oh, it's, it's true, it went both ways. There's, there's something here. And uh, getting to come and conduct in March in the middle of sort of a wild time uh, and watching the musicians of the orchestra rise to the occasion in such an incredibly beautiful way to put on a concert, even, even if it was you know not so many people in the audience and everyone masked and broadcasted and everything's changing, it felt everyone was so game to do so many beautiful things and, and really go for it, even though the challenges of sitting far apart from each other and all those things were, were uh, you know, constantly nipping at our heels. And, you know, of course, love at first here, but then realizing that, you know, the staff of this organization is so incredibly dedicated to the, to the artistic mission and vision of the orchestra and bringing music to people in the community and then meeting the board uh, and, and saying, wow, this is you know, bold thinking, mus moving forward in, a, in, in big ways to bring, to bring projects here. I really, um, I have to thank also, you know, we've done this, but the musicians of the orchestra embraced 
I, I, me so much. I felt so immediately at home and warmly uh, welcomed. And thank you so much, both back in 2018 as, as a guest conductor and then again in March. And I can't wait for next season to jump right in and build so many fun projects together. And that's one thing I really do want to make sure that we're always doing, thinking about the incredibly huge, gigantic, beautiful projects that we could build all together and um, how, you know, there's so many things from around the world that I've been lucky to experience in the last 20 years, and, and I want to bring that here. But just as important, I feel like the things that we can do with this incredible orchestra is build projects that will go on and bring our name elsewhere. And I think those moments, whether they're these gigantic, beautiful, huge projects or intimate moments that we could all share together, I think we're going to bring things to life here, whether it's with orchestral concerts and commissions and projects and collaborations in the community that will venture out and, and bring the name of the Virginia Symphony around the world. And I can't wait. And I am so excited to, to dig right in. And thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. Nobody's going to need to write him any talking points, are they? <laughs> well, thanks again for coming today. Uh, I know you'll want to come to each and every concert next season, and we've provided brochures uh, for you. Which tickets will be on sale. Please subscribe, um, and there'll be even more excitement to come over the summer as we announce more concerts, and uh, so please be in touch. Eric will be in the foyer, and I'd like for everyone who is interested to stop and say hello. Uh, again, he's a very warm and welcoming guy, and I know we're going to enjoy getting to know him. Um, but please stop, out, stop by on your way out and say hello. Thanks again for coming.